Hello, and welcome to She Conquers Capital, powered by Zane Venture Fund and sponsored by Lowenstein Sandler. I'm your host, Stephanie Diaz, podcaster, founder, community builder, and partner at Zane Venture Fund. And you're in the right place for powerful conversations with the women and allies impacting the flow of capital. I am thrilled for today's conversation. I can tell by the pre-chat, we've already got the energy flowing. <laughs> So thrilled to welcome venture partner at Mr. Pink VC, Jeep Klein. Jeep, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you for doing this for all of us. I'm thrilled. I mean, I'm inspired. It's my pleasure truly to have the ability to have conversations and connect with women like yourself. So why don't you give us a peek into who you are and your journey? Yeah, absolutely. Well. You know, like I, I told a lot of people that I'm sort of like an oddball in technology industry. I, uh, I was trained as an economist. Um, I, you know, um, my first um, uh, job um, was an economist at the World Bank in Washington, D.C., where I served uh, ministries of finance in a lot of emerging markets um, in Eastern Europe, in um, Asia, where I'm from, Bangkok, Thailand, in Latin America, and, you know, um, and of course, Eastern part of Africa. So it was a phenomenal experience. So um, I, you know, at the time, it was almost 20 years ago, I also, you know, started seeing the rise in the technology industry where, you know, um, people, when people started um, sending money, you know, on, um, um, on a feature phone, uh, mm -hmm. not even smartphone. That was mm -hmm. even before PayPal was super famous, right? And I knew I had to come to tech. So I kind of moved my way, you know, from East Coast to West Coast. And along the way, I got my MBA from UC Berkeley. Right after school, I joined Intel um, uh, as a part of management leadership program. And um, during Intel, um, one of the I would call, you know, um, my most uh, proudest, uh, pr uh, my, my proudest project was I um, helped create a uh, low cost tablet business. It was an Android based business that was kind of like new at the time, considering relationship between Windows, you know, Microsoft and Intel. And um, it was a, you know, became very successful. It was launched um, all over the world, especially um, in emerging markets. So I was, you know, um, I was asked, um, to run um, an, an early stage company, um, a VC backed company, which I enjoy doing very much. So it's kind of like one thing after another, then the Dean of um, Engineering and Computer Science, Dean Shankar Sastry, you know, um, found me and said, you know, can you come and really help you know, advise a lot of entrepreneurs at Berkeley, you know, uh, we have a Skydeck incubation program, we need a strong push, um, can you help me out? And you can't really say no to the mm -hmm. dean. So I was like, <laughs> of course, you know, <laughs> I'm excited doing it. Um, and I, I really enjoy now, I started seeing the impact of, you know, my work from, you know, industry to industry, big company, small company, and now not just one company. So I, I did it with a lot of um, CEOs and, you know, help entrepreneurs get off the ground successfully. So after um, that experience, I thought, can I do something that is better and bigger? can I do this um, with a global impact in mind? Um, mm -hmm. That's how, you know, it's in my bone, in my DNA. So I created a venture fund, you know, um, and Dean Sastry was one of the biggest supporters. Um, um, Enrico Moretti, you know, who is a famous economist, um, also supported me alongside with so many people. So I created a venture fund um, that really helped bridge emerging markets with Silicon Valley, right? Um, we, you know, we sort of live in uh, living in our own bubbles. We want to share, you know, capital access. We want to share technology access. We have a lot to share so that other countries sort of like emerge successfully. And that led me to, you know, found, you know, um, 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 a venture fund and, you know, end up with Mr. Ping, um, who, you know, I met at Berkeley uh, more than a decade ago. And now we already started investment in Latin America. And hopefully a few years from now, we're going to roll it out to Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe and other regions. I love it. And exactly who is Mr. Pink? Who is Mr. Or, Pink? Or what's the story <laughs> behind the name? <laughs> I, I, always, I always love when, when people... So it's actually uh, from a movie uh, called Reservoir Dog. Um, that was a... Okay. Uh, 
the you know movie that made you know Quentin okay, Tarantino maybe, famous. Uh, I bet everyone watching this is gonna be like, how does she not know who Mr. Pink is if everyone has watched this movie and I'm the only one who hasn't? No, so, no, no, no. Excuse Actually, me for not getting are. the reference. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. And Mr. Pink basically was the only one in a movie who came out alive. It was actually it was, it was quite oh, violent. Okay. I, I didn't, I didn't quite like the movie, you know, now looking back, but I kind of like the story that, you know, how to we view ourselves as, you know, we are emerging, you know, uh, people view what maybe as an underdog and, you I know, but it. we know who we are, we are smart, we know what we do. Yeah, and you'll come out on top no matter what. Okay, I promise by the time this airs and goes live, I will have watched the movie. Um, I love that. Well, I know, you know, um, being a, a Latinx founder myself, I have, you know, so much like connection to the fact that you all are focusing on Latam is that, you know, emerging market and specifically Argentina. I saw a lot of your team is based there. So talk about the opportunities that you're seeing there. Oh my gosh, huge. Well, so first of all, you know, um, um, the tech ecosystem has been growing um, all over the world. We saw a lot of talented entrepreneurs all around the world, and but especially um, in, you know, um, South America, right? Um, Brazil is booming, but there are um, a lot of other countries, especially Spanish speaking countries that we see the rise um, of, you know, um, ecosystem. Um, if you look into the numbers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the money that the venture investment um, went into the country, I believe, you know, last year alone was probably around 5 billion, half of those, you know, um, went to Brazil and, and another half is like throughout, throughout, the, you know, the region. Mm -hmm. And the number actually kind of triple or double every year. Yeah. The problem, or I call the opportunity, yeah. mm -hmm. um, is that, you know, those entrepreneurs, most of them super talented engineers, business people, they couldn't really come here. They don't have the network uh, to really raise proper round or raising funds, you know, from VCs in the US. So we said, you know, why don't we try to open the access by bringing the capital there? Mm -hmm. um, and we start there because uh, my partners are located in Argentina, um, in Buenos Aires, you know, um, after COVID, we're going to spread out a team to other countries as well, including um, Colombia, Chile, and Uruguay, and, and, and whatnot, right? Um, and I can tell you this, we already wrote the first check, and the first check was, you know, um, a woman founder, you know, um, company, and mm -hmm. I just couldn't be more proud of what we do, and the company is doing really well based on the revenue and the traction that they have. So we, we target, we, we call underserved entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we view ourselves as an impact VC. However, we do not sacrifice return. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the financial return is greater if, you know, um, well, I hope, right? It's it remain to be seen, but what we see early, it's greater because those, when the demand kind of meet the supply, that's when the opportunity happens. Absolutely. And um, not too long ago, Karen, uh, Catherine Wartsman of Amplify Capital was on the show, also Impact Fund, also sharing the outsized returns that they're seeing. So Impact definitely is, is showing that it is, yes, it's Impact, it is for good, and it is a smart move for for these investments. So really excited that you're seeing that as well. Uh, when it comes to the type of technology or industries, you know, are you seeing, is it, is it a little bit of everything? Or are you seeing some trends there that are, yeah. that are emerging more heavily? Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. I also got a lot of questions like, why, do, why don't we do like one, you know, like one vertical funds, like specific fund because venture capital is super competitive right now. Why don't mm -hmm. we focus on one, one vertical? And the way that we see the, uh, we see the market, especially in emerging markets, I mean, they're new. They just started say, you know, 10, 20 years ago. They're not like 50 years old, like Silicon Valley. If we focus on one vertical, we're going to miss a lot of other opportunities that come along the way. Having said that, this fund, Mr. Ping, was emerged during COVID. And, and, and the big trend that we see is digitalization. I mean, digitalization has been around for mm -hmm. a long time, but it is growing at a much faster pace, you know, um, everything we do right now is online, we social network online, we meet new people online, the way people work even after COVID, it's not gonna go back to the same way. So um, 
So we follow this trend, right? And if you break down into sector, and of course, you know, it's education tech that, you know, the skilled workers, sometimes they lost jobs during COVID. They come, you know, um, in the startup company that we invested in, they come, you know, take classes, uh, gain uh, skills that is more relevant, and then we push them back for employment. Or, you know, we see obviously, you know, FinTech, that is rising really fast. And it's the same in South America and in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. FinTech is huge, unbanked population, how we Absolutely. get them access to the banking and all these things that, you know, we look across sectors that is so important to kind of make economy shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to that point, you know, sometimes there are um, increased opportunities because that, you know, that um, curve just is so much steeper in terms of how, you know, how fast they can leapfrog forward if they um, are integrating a lot of, of new technologies. I would love from your, I would love for you to put on your economist hat <laughs> for a second. Um, you know, the economies in, in Latin America and especially Argentina has, you know, had a lot of, you know, of upheaval, a little bit of turbulence with its economy. What is it like to double down on a region that has had that instability? Yeah, you know, um, the, and the funny thing is, it's, it's the same as in Southeast Asia. The characteristic of, of the regions and the countries, the fragmentation, the government that has you know, impact, you know, positively, sometimes not so positively on the economy. I mean, obviously, we, uh, we, we view it as an opportunity. That's why we got in, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and the beauty of it is that, you know, the economy at large, um, um, uh, uh, the policy at large um, is being driven, you know, by the government, right? Um, if they support technology industry, that's great. You know, if not, the private sector has to come in. And I think that's sort of like, you know, the way that I view it. Um, mm -hmm. Argentina is different from, you know, Colombia and Uruguay. In fact, you know, some of um, potential or, you know, current LPs, uh, limited partners that we have decided to relocate, you know, unfortunately from Argentina to Uruguay simply because, you know, they know what they are getting into. Mm -hmm. um, but we also view that, you know, for the emerging scene in the technology industry, you still have a lot of talented engineers who want to be a successful company. Now, what difference is that when we founded, um, you know, when we create our fund, we knew since day one that these entrepreneurs are going to need help, whether that may be the tax policy, whether that may be even company registrations, we try, you know, to create an end-to-end -end solution. So when they're ready, you know, to grow and raise, say, post-series A round that we will support from the U.S. and link them with the U.S. VCs, um, they're ready to do that in a way that it is easy to do. So we found a team that has, you know, um, lawyer as one of operating partners. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, tax. Um, expert as you know an operating um, venture partner so all of these team um, would help them operate and grow companies successfully I mean I just can't even imagine what some of these founders and then you know Mr. Pink comes along and just the the access and support that you give them um, is it, just incredible I would love to you mentioned the government how involved is the government in supporting the startup community there or is it really in on the on the shoulders of the private sector at least in this moment yeah, you know, and it varies um, country by country. Um, uh, we see, you know, some um, some of the you know, like say uh, Chile, you know, mm -hmm. um, the governments, you know, try to create, you know, a particular support or organization um, or funds to really help propel, you know, um, the venture funds to get access um, for the entrepreneurs to get access to. Um, some country like Argentina, not so much. Um, mm -hmm. I hope it will be in the future because the push like this actually matters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, you, you, you see a lot of examples from, you know, um, Singapore, right? With the government push of, you know, of course, China and even Israel. So, and support doesn't have to be just financial support, but it can be, you know, institutions or, you know, be a broker to bring uh, multi-stakeholders together. So in South America specifically, uh, you know, I, I see the uh, government of Chile trying to do that, Argentina, not so much, you know, Uruguay, they're trying to do a, a little bit of the push. Um, 
But as you said, you know, um, it is still a lot on the private sector side. Yeah. Um, that, you know, have to go in um, like us, um, not just in terms of the funding, but in terms of also coaching because we need to bring them up to speed on what it really means to be entrepreneurs. How are you gonna be successful, you know, if we go into and lead seed round, we follow on rounds, and then, you know, when you are going to series B and C and beyond, how do you do that successfully? And part of it, that's why I'm here, because I'm trying to connect, you know, local entrepreneurs uh, with long-term success by partnering with a lot of VCs in the US and in the Bay Area. Yeah. And it takes a little bit, um, all kind of all hands on deck. You know, I shared 2019, Absolutely. I was in Bogota, Colombia, met with one of the politicians there and they were just, he, you know, talking about galvanizing that startup community, but you know, everyone is in a different phase and, and the needs are so different across the board. Um, I love that you all are so hands on. I want to, I want to go to some, when you, um, when you submitted your, you know, booked your spot here, I asked you, what's your biggest piece of advice? I don't know if you remember what you shared there, um, but you gave a quote that says success is 99% failure. And I would love to know, because we all, you know, we all have our bumps in the road. Um, what is your favorite failure? Oh my goodness. Um, let me think. Oh my gosh, I, I just have a lot. <laughs> I know, I know, same here. I mean, um, we would be here all day. <laughs> I know, I, 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 have, um, I have a lot along the way. You know, I think that going back into, you know, um, your um, questions early on before, you know, um, we started um, recording, you, you, you asked about which fund I focus on. Yeah. When I set out, you know, um, that I'm gonna do venture capital, I knew it has to be global in nature. I know I want to focus on emerging markets all around the world. Um, I see a lot of people who are talented, but they just don't have access, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I started in Southeast Asia because it's a region that I know, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm from Thailand. I went back pre-COVID, you know, talking to a lot of public institutions, government, um, um, high-level governments, as well as um, educational institutions. And I realized that I was probably a little bit too early, you know, except for Singapore. Singapore is, you know, um, an exception mm -hmm. among all the 11 countries, right? The rest, um, you know, they don't, you know, um, it, it's going to take quite a while for them to understand what venture fund really is, what kind of benefit they're going to get if, you know, um, they want to link themselves to technology industry in Silicon Valley and maybe some other regions. So um, for me, um, when you ask me the, uh, this question, like, oh, okay, so how are you man managing to fund? So for translational venture fund, uh, what I do, so I pivoted instead mm -hmm. of doing a typical venture fund. So I said, look, why don't we try something new? Why don't I introduce you know, a number of startups um, to Southeast Asia and you see how they operate, you see the technology that they created, you see, you know, perhaps, you know, some IPs that, you know, they can create an impact on your enterprise business and how you work together. At the same time, I also bring um, the, you know, entrepreneurs from the region to incubate here because I'm advisors at Skydeck and on the Alchemist and also some other incubation programs. So they learn, they know, you know, what it means to really start a company off the ground, whether or not you are venture business or non-venture business. So you see, you learn what it's all about. It's, I'm a little bit too soon to part Yeah. It. Well, sometimes we're early, but you know what, you're still laying the groundwork, you know? That's and right. so sometimes it, it's not, it's still worthwhile to know that that's where you're going so that you can use this time as wisely and productively as possible. So I'm yeah. um, really excited. And I know I can tell whatever you put your mind to, you're going to make it happen so that, you know, so the, the Asia um, initiative is going to, is going to oh, take it, we, hold. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming in the next two, three years. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love it. Um, I'd love to shift. This is something that I ask all of my guests here. So um, obviously I'm with Zane Venture Fund. We are based in Atlanta. Our focus is on diverse founding teams, building tech enabled solutions. For us, it's here in the Southeast. And, um, yep. and there's there's so much data about how, as you know, to your point as well, the diversity 
you know, impacts returns in a positive way. The more diversity of thought you have around the table, diverse teams are outperforming. Um, But everyone kind of has a different idea. The word diversity can mean a lot of different things to different people. So I would love to know, what does diversity mean to you? You know, I have to tell you the truth, it it evolves over time and it depends on who I talk to as I, you know, travel to many countries. For me at this point in time, you know, um, being American now in the U.S., um, it is not, it it goes beyond diversity of thinking. You know, um, 10 years ago, people talk about diversity of thinking. If you're thinking different than me, no, but then that, that is, that creates like people who like you actually. It's mm. not, it's not, it's no longer measurable. So when, when, you know, um, at this point in time, it is, it has to look like America. That's what, you know, President Obama said, that's what Hillary Clinton said, and a lot of leaders, you know, is all about, you know, gender. It has to be race. It has to be, to me, also age group. Um, I'm also on the board of director um, at, you know, um, um, Intel Alumni Network. I'm the youngest um, on the board group. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I joined the board. Be, be, I have two goals. The board is doing a really good job in terms of balancing the gender. I think 40%, well, 40% women, not, not there yet, but, you know, better than a lot of other boards. Absolutely. Um, um, but, you know, we have, but we have to bring different age groups together. We can be just, you know, 60 and above, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's how my generation get to learn from Andy Grove's generation Mm -hmm. and, you know, vice versa. So that's a particular setting for when we invest. um, That's also a different setting. So I I think um, I may have mentioned that, you know, the first check that we wrote, you know, it also a woman founder, we look for different in terms of gender, diversity, race, and thinking. When I go to Asia, that's also a different story because the countries, um, a lot of countries are relatively homogeneous, right? Mm-hmm. And you have to branch out and bring outsider in. And that could mean, you know, people who have experience um, building, t- um, you know, successful company from the Bay Area, from Atlanta, you know, um, or from Europe or Israel. So the difference in thinking for them is the first step to achieve diversity that we are talking about today that we're trying to push in the United States. I love it. And and I really love the focus on age as well. I couldn't agree more. Um, I know for me, as I have surrounded even my inner circle and really expanding my inner circle to include different age groups, it has been such a benefit. Um, And definitely more people can benefit from, from thinking along those lines as well. Before we part, is there any, you know, advice that you really want to share for founders as they are getting capital ready, um, you know, launching a new round, uh, especially during these times? What do you want to share for successfully closing capital? There is always a way. <laughs> Love that. Meaning, you know, I'm, I like to tell the founders that do not view the world as a zero sum game. Mm. A lot of people, you know, who I talked to thought, oh, if I don't get this, if I don't get a seat, you know, and that's it, it has to be, you know, top 10 or top five firms. No, you have to look at the world as, you know, um, um, growing, Um, the ecosystem is growing. If you don't get money from this fund, you find your own way. Maybe, you know, you change, maybe you go to individuals. There are a lot of ways to build a company. So um, that would be my, my advice. I, I don't like when people say, oh, this is an e zero sum game. If you don't get it, you know, you lose your chance. It's mm-hmm. never true. Uh, and the, the path to where we want to go is rarely how we expect to get there. That's for sure. So um, I love that. Jeep, thank you so much. If people want to connect with you, where's where's the best platform for them to do that? Yeah, I'm on, you know, I, I, I just got on uh, Twitter. <laughs> After, <laughs> sign up for 10 years. I know I'm very late on social media, but, you know, I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn, um, Facebook as well. You know, anywhere you can find me. And of course, email me, you know, social at mrping.vc. 
I'm, you know, I'm on, I'm trying at least to be on every social media. It's just, okay. But and I'm on Clubhouse too, by the way. Oh, good. I, I know. Well, then you're ahead of me there. I'm, I'm, I have an account, but I need to be more active. Um, I love this. Jeep, thank you so much. I'll include links wherever you're watching or listening to this so that you can connect with Jeep. Thank you so much for being here um, and be sure to subscribe for more amazing conversations with the women and allies impacting the flow of capital. Thanks again for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.